ancient Rome had three major forms of government, a monarchy, the republic, and an empire, which is really just a monarchy again, but bigger. Both transitions from monarchy to republic and then back again were ushered in by a guy named Brutus, ousting the ruling tyrant. A remarkable coincidence. Let's talk about the first one. Hello world, my name is Atticus, and welcome to History Class. Rome was founded April 21st, 753 BCE when Romulus rigged a game against his brother and called some cool looking hills in the Latium Swamp his own. Since they were his hills, naturally he was king, and the first form of Roman government was born. According to most records, Rome had seven kings, or eight if you count the time Romulus, uh, kidnapped women from the neighboring Sabine kingdom and had to share the right of rule with the Sabine king or lose Rome entirely. Monarchs are rarely great in my experience, but Rome survived Romulus and the monarchy continued up till Lucius Tarquinius Superbus or Tarquin the Proud. He ruled from 534 to 509 BCE. It's difficult to pick fact from fiction for this period of Roman history. Surviving historical records are few and far between, and most of what we do have comes from the period of the Roman Empire, where they had a vested interest in glorifying the old monarchy days. Dionysius of Halicarnassus is the earliest historian of early Roman history whose work has survived, and he worked primarily under Octavian, the first Roman emperor. Early enough that he probably did have a solid understanding of that history from records that had survived the half millennia, but also late enough that the motivations of his patron, the emperor, could call his work into question. I think, however, that Octavian would have wanted the early kings aggrandize Romulus and Numa Pompilius, the second king especially. Tarquin's rule was so terrible that it caused a whole new system of government to form. That's not so easily shaken. So I think for the most part we can trust the record here. Octavian would have wanted Tarquin the Proud as a sort of foil. Power should not be entrusted to men like that. Men who had infiltrated the Senate. Instead, power should be left in the hands of good men like Romulus, Numa Pompilius, and now Octavian himself. So. Who was the not Octavian, Tarquin the Proud? Reportedly, Tarquin the Proud was either the son or the grandson of the fifth Roman king, Lucius Tarquinius Priscus, or Tarquin the Elder, and married the daughter of the sixth king, Sirius Tullius. He actually married both of Sirius's daughters, Tullia Major I, but she lacked her younger sister's ambition, Tullia Minor who had been married to Tarquin's brother, Arun, who lacked Tarquin's ambition. Tullia Minor plotted with Tarquin to kill her sister, his brother, and her father, the king, in order to secure her place as the Queen of Rome. I do trust the later records more than the earlier ones, but this does feel a lot like a respin of Medea, though the motivations differ. And when I think about the version of history Octavian would have wanted to tell, I can see a version where he pins the evil of the last king of Rome not on the man's own ambition and greed, but rather as poison whispers from his wife, someone who had killed her husband, her sister, and her father, all for the pursuit of power, further distancing corrupt leadership from monarchy. After claiming the throne through blood, Tarquin secured his position by appealing to Roman patricians, the upper class, and specifically the ones who had gained their power from Tarquin the Elder, Tarquin's maybe grand, maybe father, when he added a hundred seats to the Roman Senate. Those same people immediately lost some of that power during Servius' rule, where he spread power to the Roman people, allowing more people the right to vote. That might sound odd but only because I forgot to explain how the Roman monarchy worked. Kings in Rome were voted in by the Senate, translated more literally than its modern use, a council of elders. The oldest men of Rome's oldest families were in charge of who was king and subsequently of advising that king during their reign. 
Once voted in, though, a king ruled for life. Primarily, the Senate existed to make the rich and powerful Roman families feel like they had a say in politics. They got to pick a king and whisper in his ear, but absolute authority still resided exclusively with that king. And while they could veto laws, the group that was actually in charge of those laws was the Comitia Curiata, which consisted of just 30 people. The Senate had been 200 people, but Tarquin the Elder bumped it up to 300 in the hopes of having a third of the Senate solidly on his side. Sirius formed the Comitia Centuriata, which served a similar purpose to the Curiata, but instead of being populated by the patrician class, it served as representation for everyone, or, well, at least more people than before. This action placed more power in the hands of the people. This was not how Tarquin the Proud, maybe grand, maybe son of royalty, wanted his government. Tarquin had a strong start to his reign by bribing the senators his father had promoted and slandering Sirius' name. If you believe Livy, Tarquin sat himself upon the throne, accompanied by armed guards, and summoned the senate to listen as he called the ruling king every slur they had. When Sirius heard about what was going on, he went to confront Tarquin, who insulted him to his face. And then Tarquin, a young man full of vim and vigor, threw Sirius, who by this point had been king for over 40 years, so was probably at least like 60, down some stairs. Sirius and his retainers began to flee, but the king was assassinated in the street, presumably by Tarquin's people. Livy goes on to say that Tarquin's wife, Sirius's younger daughter, came by to congratulate her new king husband, but he sent her back lest she get caught up in the middle of the coup that was happening. The story goes that her carriage came across her father's corpse, causing the driver to stop, but she took the reins and drove over his body. Tarquin pointedly did not bury it. He then killed any senators he suspected of still being loyal to Sirius. You might think he'd replace them with his own supporters, but he just left the seats empty. Perhaps he had no supporters left. Tarquin's rule was one of fear. He killed anyone who dared speak against him, even going so far as to plant weapons in a neighboring leader's house in order to get them the death penalty for plotting assassination. Any peoples that didn't swear allegiance were at risk of subjugation as Tarquin went to war against at least three different peoples, the Volsci, the Gabi, and the Sabines, taking their wealth to fund the construction of a temple to Jupiter Optimus Maximus, which Tarquin the Elder had promised. He embarked on a fourth war, this one against the Rituli, but they weren't able to take the capital by force so they settled for a siege. With little to do, some young nobles in the army began talking about their wives. The nephew of the king boasted about his wife's virtue, and the group went to check on all the wives in question, and indeed, Lucretia, wife to the king's nephew, was the only one engaged in domestic activities, thus making her the most virtuous. I would like to think we have moved past this mentality in the last 2,500 years. The group hung out there for the evening, and later one of them, the son of the king, so a cousin to this family, came back and forced himself upon Lucretia. She told her family of the incident and took her own life. Lucretia's husband, her father, and two companions of her husband vowed to rid Rome of the king and the entire Tarquin family, which did include the husband. Luckily, one of the companions, Lucius Unius Brutus, was a member of the king's personal bodyguard, which would give him a great opportunity for assassination, but also afforded him the right to call the Comitia. He opted for the latter and argued for the king's exile, laying out Tarquin's and the rest of his family's many crimes and grievances. The Comitia agreed, and rather than risk another tyrant, they chose to elect two leaders named consuls who would rule for only one year. 
and thus the Roman Republic was born. Tarquin did not take exile well, and spent the rest of his life attempting to retake Rome, but to no avail. Lucretia's husband was one of the first elected consuls, but he bore the Tarquin name, and Brutus, the other consul, ran him out of Rome. The Republic would go on to last another 500 years or so before another Brutus took it upon himself to change the system of government from Republic to a fancier monarchy. But that's a story for another time. I have been Atticus, and thank you for attending.